Hello there. Welcome back. This is your fourth Italian lesson. Mm -hmm. And today we'll be looking at some common phrases and expressions that will come in handy if you ever come to Italy. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember you... Um, you had a trip to Florence last year, okay. Are you planning on going back? Okay, so... Um, this lesson will definitely be useful for you. Okay, let's get started. You can take notes. So, let's get started with the first expressions. Greetings. So, I think we already um, went through a few greetings together. So you might want to check out your notes. Let's move on to the second expression of today. Grazie. Grazie, which you already know, I'm sure. It's very popular around the world. But make sure you get the pronunciation right. It's grazie. Grazie. Try and repeat. Grazie. I want to hear that final E. Grazie. E. Grazie. Very simple, and it just means thank you. But if you want to be super nice, you can also say Grazie mille. Grazie mille, which means thank you very much. If someone says Grazie to you, you might want to respond using prego, prego, you're welcome, prego, prego has actually a lot of different uh, meanings, so the first one is you're welcome, but it also means uh, go ahead. So, for example, if you're talking to someone and you want them to express their opinion or ask a question, you can say, go ahead. Prego. Prego. Okay. You can also use it, for example, at the supermarket at the entrance where maybe there is uh, an old lady or an old man uh, close to you and you want them to get into the supermarket first so you say prego prego go ahead last but not least prego is also used when you are saying, uh, come in. So, for example, if a friend knocks on your door and you want them to come in, you can say, prego, prego, like, come in. Now, let's talk about scusa. Scusa. Scusa means both sorry and excuse me. We can use it both to apologize 
to put to someone, but also uh, to get someone's attention. Remember that scusa is informal, okay? It's very important you remember this. If you want to use the formal version, you're going to say scusi. Scusi. So you say scusa with uh, your friends, your family, people you know well, or eventually people your age. And you, you use a scusi when you are in a formal setting. For example, at work, at university, or sometimes also in shops and restaurants. You could also add mi scusi. Or scusa. Mi scusami. Or mi scusi. Mi scusi. In this case, you're just putting more emphasis on yourself. I would say that you can use both scusa and scusi. Uh, scusa and scusa mi, or scusi and mi scusi, you can use them interchangeably. Now let's talk about mi dispiace. Mi dispiace. This is used to apologize. But it's very, very emotional. Honestly, we actually use it for example when a friend of ours tells us a, ba a bad story or a sad story. So we feel sorry for them. And in that case, we say, Mi dispiace. Mi dispiace. For example, if I'm telling you that I ran out of pasta and wine in my house, so you're going to say, mi dispiace. Um, mi dispiace. Now, let's go to the next one. Per favore. Or per piacere. Per favore. Per piacere. These two are very easy. They simply mean please. They are totally interchangeable, so you could just use the one that you like the most. Now, let's say, for example, that you walk into a bar to get your café and you say something like Scusi, prendo un café, per favore. Or Scusi, prendo un café, per piacere. Okay? That's a very useful sentence. Write it down. And now, one of the most important expressions that you need to memorize. Come ti chiami? Which you probably know already. Come ti chiami? Come ti You want to get to know people in Italy, so you want to ask for their name. Come ti chiami simply means, what's your name? 
And how would you respond to that? Very easy. Mi chiamo and then your name. Mi chiamo plus your name. And what if you want to ask something like, how are you? Well, that's very easy as well. Come stai? Stai? How are you? Remember that come stai is informal. If you want to be formal, you just need to drop the final I and say come sta, which is formal. Now, let me give you a few ways to respond to come stai. This last one, sto alla grande, I use it quite often. We can also say come va instead of come stai. Come va. In this case, we're using va, that is the third person singular of the verb andare, to go. So basically, it's the same thing that you do in English with the expression How is it going? One way to respond to this would be Va tutto bene, grazie Va tutto bene, grazie Okay, now let's talk about some useful and very practical expressions that you might need to use. The first one is dove plus a place. Now, let's not kid ourselves. You're not going to use this expression to ask for directions. That's because everybody uses their phone. So, asking for directions is not a thing anymore. If you still ask for directions or you plan to ask directions, in Italy, I think that's a great way to practice your Italian uh, with native speakers. But most of the time, you would use this expression to ask uh, things like Dov'è il bagno? Dov'è il bagno? So let's say, for example, you're in a restaurant and you want to ask for the bathroom and you say Dov'è il bagno? Dov'è il bagno? You can't use your phone for that. So remember, Dov'è il plus the place you want to go to. Now, let's talk about money. 
quanto costa quanto costa we also use another expression for this which is quante quante is very common to use when you're asking for the total amount of money that you need to pay for but if you just want to ask the specific price of an item then you're going to say quanto costa so this is for the total amount of course an Italian is going to get back to you with numbers so if you don't know numbers you want to make sure you study them okay i know numbers of are kind of a pain but knowing numbers when you go to a foreign country is very very important now let's say you're an italian bakery and you want to buy that amazing arancino that is staring at you well in that case you can just say mi può dare un arancino mi può dare un arancino now if you don't know how to pronounce or you don't know the name of the item you want to buy you can just say mi può dare quello mi può dare quello and just point your finger at the item you want if you want to be nice you can also add per favore or per piacere to this specific expression but if you're in a restaurant and you want to order food well it's very easy you can use the word vorrei 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 means i would like so you can say Vorrei una lasagna. Grazie. Or you could use the expression prendo. Prendo. Prendo means I'll have. Literally, I take. For example, in Italy, we don't really get or have coffees, we actually take them. So in a bar, I would say something like, prendo un caffè, grazie. Prendo un caffè, grazie. Now let's say you're back at the restaurant and you want to ask for the check, the bill. What are you gonna say? Super easy. You're going to say, Ci può portare il conto? Ci può portare il conto? Now, what if you want to ask where a person is from? You're going to say Di dove sei? Dove sei? Where are you from? And how do you answer? You have two options 
you either say sono di plus the city you are from for example sono di torino sono di roma or Sono plus the adjective of nationality. For example, I would say Sono Italiano. So what you might want to do is to go on word reference and um, look for your adjective of nationality. And now remember that if the adjective of nationality you find ends in O, then if you're a male, you're gonna leave it as it is. But if you're a female, then you're gonna change that to A. So from O to A. So, for instance, if you're uh, in a, an American man, you're going to say Sono Americano But if you're an American woman, you're going to say Sono Americana But if the adjective of nationality you find ends in E, then you don't have to worry about changing it, okay? For example, you would say Sono Francese I'm French mm, Both if you're a woman or a man And the last expression of today Scusami, non parlo molto bene l'italiano. This expression might be very useful if you want to switch to English. But let me tell you something. Yes, you don't speak Italian very well yet. So why don't you get started and learn this beautiful language and you can keep practicing, studying and uh, you can keep coming to these lessons, okay? So try and repeat this last expression molto bene italiano ok um, I uh, strongly uh, suggest you rehearse these expressions that we went through today ok and um, you can also call me and uh, repeat them to me so that you practice and are ready for your winter trip to Rome Okay? Next lesson we'll be looking at uh, another very useful topic Okay? So, I'll see you next time. Grazie. Ciao ciao.